Hello everyone, um, welcome, and I have switched gears. I am completely into Christmas now. I finished up all of my Halloween, and um, full speed ahead Christmas. I have all kinds of graphics to do, all kinds of signs, all kinds of ideas. So um, hopefully you'll enjoy them and you'll follow along as I post my videos. I had some signs I was putting together today, so I thought I would hop on. This is kind of last minute. I always do my lives last minute, um, but I had some that I was finishing and I thought I would uh, invite you to join along while I make them. So we'll get uh, started on the first one. I'm just going to bring the camera down just a little bit so you can see my signs a little bit better while I'm working on them. And we'll get started and if you have any questions just leave a message let me know where you're watching from um, leave a comment and if you have any crafting questions leave them there and I'll try to um, answer them for you hey Brie how are you if you guys have not um, checked out Upcycle by Bree's channel. You need to check out. She has some fabulous DIYs. Bree, I'm going to put a link down below um, so they can check out your channel because I love it. Okay, so these signs I've done my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer using my Mod Podge mat. I love this transfer. If you've been following my channel along for a while, you know that all my sign making, I use this. I have tried all kinds of different methods. I always come back to this, and I think it's because I just love that rustic feel that it, it leaves on signs. Um, now, I am new to the Cricut world, and I'm open to experimenting and trying new things, so I'm gonna try making some signs with my Cricut, I'm gonna do some stencils, and then I'm gonna compare them and do them side by side. And actually, that's one of the next videos that I have lined up is to compare the Mod Podge reverse graphic to um, a Cricut stencil. So you'll have to watch out for that one. What have we got going on here? We have people from Idaho, Kansas, Nebraska. Uh, too funny, I just finished sanding my signs already to put the graphics on. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Bree. Okay, so Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer. Um, Print them off. I print these off on regular computer paper with my laser jet printer. Put the Mod Podge on. You got to make sure you reverse the text. And then I put them on my side, on my pieces of wood. I like doing a light colored paint background and I like using chalk paint. If you're using a darker color, I find these signs don't work as well. You can kind of see the outline of it and it just doesn't blend in. When you're using a lighter background, um, it just looks better. These are a really rustic looking sign. These aren't going to look pristine and, and perfect. And I mean, I've been doing these forever and I never have a sign that comes out perfect. But that's what I like about this method. It looks like it's a sign that was made a hundred years ago and rustic and chippy. So I've just wet this with a little rag and a little bit of water and I just dampen it so you can just wet the paper and see the graphics show for it through and uh, and then rub the paper off that's all there is to it I've already got that first layer of paper rubbed off what have we got here we got California California coast which is probably a lot warmer than it is here in Ontario Canada right now Nova Scotia hi there sunny Alberta and Indiana thanks for joining guys okay so I've got my top layer off once I get my top layer off then I just like to use my fingers to rub off the rest because you can feel the paper underneath and you just know when to start rubbing and when to finish and when you have it all off you can feel that the paper has all kind of come off and I love this graphic jingle bells so I'm just gonna rub until all the paper's off. And then that's it, it is so easy. Now, the one thing that I didn't mention, when you put your graphics on, set it aside, don't touch it until the next day. Let it sit overnight, let it dry really well. If you put this on and you don't let it dry properly and then you try to rub it off, 
you're going to rub the graphics right off. You want that Mod Podge to get nice and hard and dry really well. Love that font. Me too. It's kind of like that um, real vintage Christmas look. And I love vintage Christmas. I don't do much modern. Everything I have, most of my Christmas decor is all stuff that I've collected at thrift stores. And it's all kind of vintage 50s and 60s decor that I love. Would the reverse method work with napkins? Um, I actually, you know what? I don't think I've ever tried it with napkins. I might though. I might try that. See if I can print it, reverse the text, print on a napkin, and then try it. And you know what? You might not, and then obviously you wouldn't have as much paper to rub off. That is something that I am going to try. That, that's a really great suggestion. We got RJ Davis. Thanks for asking that because I'm actually going to try that. Now you have me intrigued whether that would work or not. I've just always just used my computer paper. So another list of things to do on my DIY list. If you have anything that you would like me to make a video about, make sure you let me too. No, too. I'm always looking for ideas and new things to try or things that I kind of have a little bit of experience in that I can help you guys along. Okay, I'm kind of feeling like most of the paper has rubbed off and it um, looks pretty good. So, next step, I do not like using Mod Podge as a top coat. I don't like the finish that it leaves. Um, I much prefer to use a polyacrylic sealer. This one is a satin based polyacrylic sealer. You can grab it at, it's on Amazon, you can grab it in the hardware store. It is a little bit pricey, but it just finishes the project off so much nicer than Mod Podge. That's just my personal preference, but um, that's what I like to use. Uh, do you take your items to craft fairs? I am actually really fortunate. Um, I have a friend that's local that owns a store and she takes all of my signs and sells them in her store. So it works out really well for me. So I don't have to do the craft shows and stuff like that. Although when I first started I did and I had a lot of fun doing them. But now I'm pretty much full time with my YouTube channel. So I don't have time to go and do shows and stuff like that. So when the opportunity came up to um, be able to have them in the store, it's worked out perfect. So I've just put a coat of the polyacrylic sealer on this sign. It doesn't take very long to dry. It actually dries quite quickly. Um, I'm going to set it aside and before we finish up the live, I've got some embellishments that I want to put on it and this should be dry by then and we'll finish it up. So I'll set that up there and we'll go on to the next one. Okay. Um, Tammy from Woodstock, Ontario, not too far. I'm working on ornaments right now and saw the notification for a live popped up. I've never watched. Well, welcome Tammy and hopefully I can inspire you um, with some of your crafting. My signs go to a store too. Yes, it's so easy if you can find a local store that would uh, take your stuff. Now, one issue that we have, I'm in Ontario, Canada, so we have to ship with Canada Post. It's very, very expensive. So for me to, sh to put my signs in an Etsy store and then what it would cost me to ship them, it's so expensive. If you're in the States, it's so fortunate because your postage is so much cheaper and we can't compete with it. So um, that's why it's so nice if you can find someone local because then you eliminate all that shipping portion of it. Um, where is a good place to get printer ink? I have a brother laser jet printer. I actually buy, and I know you're not supposed to, but I buy my replacement ink on eBay and it's just a refillable. I've never had any issues with it and it's always worked really well. If, but it's not a really expensive printer. If you have a really good printer, then of course you want to keep using the ink that is recommended for your printer. But I have had pretty good luck just with the refillable off of eBay. Um, I think the mom who taught us girls to use that was, is a beautiful finish. 
Yes. Okay. So this one is just a Merry Christmas. One of my favorites and actually one of my best sellers. I make this graphic into ornaments and signs and I put it on jars. Actually, you can see in the background here, I've got some glass jars I'm in the works of finishing. Um, I love putting the graph this graphic on the jars too. These I just paint with um, my homemade chalk paint. And maybe tomorrow when I finish those up, I'll pop on and I'll do a live while I finish these ones. Okay, are you using the inkjet? No, this is my laser jet printer. I use my inkjet, my laser jet printer only print, um, prints black. I don't have a colored laser printer. So if I'm doing photos or something like that and I want to do a transfer, then I will switch to my inkjet. But for most of my signs, I always use my laser jet. If you only have an option to an inkjet, you can do this process. It will work. It's a little bit more tricky, but um, it will work for you. And I have a couple tutorials on my channel um, giving you a few little tips and tricks and steps to use your inkjet to do this um, process. And I have one video where I compare the inkjet and the laser jet side by side, and you can see the difference when you're doing this transfer method. Okay, where are we at? Um, 4-H. Yes, I was in 4-H as a kid too. We had lots of fun. And you learned how to decoupage. Someone in our era small... Oh, what a perfect way to sell your stuff if you have an, a booth that you can put it. That's great. Um, on, I watched your video on how to make reversible signs, but my open office program has a reverse type dimmed. Oh, okay. Um, every program is so different to reverse your text. I know you can do it. I work, I use a word program to reverse mine, or I have any of my graphics that are in my Etsy store are already re are reversed for you. So you don't need to worry about that. One of the files is already reversed. I think I have used Google Docs. I haven't used it in a long time, but I think you might be able to reverse your text in Google Docs too. Uh, you have to check that out. I'm not 100% sure. And I'm computer savvy, but not really computer savvy, if that makes sense. When I kind of get into a mess and I don't know what I'm doing, um, I message my daughter and she usually has the right answers for me. So I can only help you with a word program. I'm not sure about open office. And I want to do some money photos. Yes, okay, so if you want to do photos with this technique, um, obviously you're not going to use your original photo. Take a photocopy of it on your laser jet or your inkjet and then do the transfer with that. That would be a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing to do with wedding photos. Are these graphics in your Etsy store? Yes, they are. You can grab them in my Etsy store. Both of them are there and you can grab them. If you purchase graphics out of there, make sure you use my code SAVE50 because anybody, uh, any of my YouTube followers, um, you can get 50% off all of the graphics over there. So make sure you use SAVE50. And when you buy them, you'll get three files. You'll get a PNG, a JPEG, and a, J, uh, a PNG reversed. So you can do just a regular de uh, de decoupage. You can do the reverse method. You can do all kinds of stuff with them. Download them to your computer. You can use them for anything you want, um, any of your crafting projects. And I don't, if you want to buy them and you want to put them on a project to sell, that's perfect. That's okay. I don't have any trademark issues or anything on them either. Aren't they, aren't daughters the best? Oh my goodness. I at least, probably, I'm going to, ah, probably six times a week. And if my daughter's watching Kirsten, she'll, she will um, attest to this probably message her and I'm like, I don't know what to do. You need to help me. I don't know how to fix this. Um, and they are wonderful to have somebody that's a little bit younger and a little bit more savvy with the tech stuff. Oh, free wood. Nothing better than finding free wood. I was in Home Depot yesterday. 
uh, and checking out some of the wood prices. And oh my gosh, there's, it's so expensive. I try. I actually hardly ever buy any wood because I'm so fortunate that I can find a lot of free wood. But if you have to buy it, my goodness, it is expensive. Okay, this one feels really good. I can feel that there's no more paper. I rubbed just about all of it off. And this actually is all just wood that I found too. It's actually uh, tongue and groove. And I cut the tongue off um, and then really distressed it. And they turned into really nice bases for a sign. Okay, just gonna put my poly acrylic on here. Um, uh, were these done with the laser printer? Yes, these are done on my laser printer. Yeah. And I just have a brother laser printer and it works perfect. Um, oh, somebody has a husband that works at a local mill and I get all the wood for free. Wouldn't that be a, an amazing, ugh, that's so fantastic. <laughs> Opposite side of the country, yes. Okay, so this one, Farmhouse Christmas. And I love this font too. I'm just gonna dampen it just so you can start to see the graphics come through. And then rub it off. Okay. And if you're just new to this technique, and you've tried it once and it didn't work for you, don't give it up because it's something that takes a little bit of practice. It's not something that you're gonna do first. If you do do it first time and it works out for you, you that lucky because it takes a, a few times to try it and get the feel for rubbing that paper off and being comfortable with it that you've got enough water on or too much water and uh, get it to work for you and also I have a Facebook page where um, I have a lot of my followers over there and if they they're making something and they're having some problems with it you can send pictures to me over there and if I have a look at what you're doing and if you're having an issue and I see the picture I can probably tell you right away where I can help you out or what you need to do to fix it so that's an option for you if you find me over on Facebook and you ever have any questions, you can send me pictures over there. I'll put a link down below after this airs and you can find it over there. Okay. Almost there. Have any of you guys started Christmas decor yet? I know it's still a little bit early. I hate rushing the season. But when you're making stuff for stores and you're doing retail, you kind of have to start. I'm actually a little bit behind the ball. You have to start a little bit earlier. Okay, I got the most of it off. Um, so if you get it too wet, can you let it dry and try again? Great question. Yes, you can. You can, if you feel like you've got too much water on it, just set it aside, let it dry a little bit, and then rub it off. The biggest um, mistakes that I see people make when they're doing these signs, putting too much Mod Podge on, and then you'll get like this lumpy edge all around the side. You just want a light coat on. And the other thing is, is when you're putting water on, you're putting too much and you're soaking it. I've seen girls where they'll and guys where they'll wet the rag and they'll lay it right on top soaking wet and leave it there and then a couple minutes later come back and rub it off and I just find for me it it's too much it's too much water and you then you have the chance of that Mod Podge um, lifting up underneath and rubbing it off okay we'll just rub away here get all that extra paper off and if you're watching, let me know where you're from. And I'm just, I, I can't believe the last, this last month, how many new followers I have to my channel. It's just fantastic to have such a huge 
community that's our um, that are enjoying watching my videos and I'm just glad to help out anybody that is looking for some inspiration or needs some help with a crafting project that they have on the go if you can find a video on my channel and I can help you out that's what it's all about Indiana This one is these pieces of wood. Um, what I did was I took my X-Acto knife and I actually chunked out all along the edge of the whole board before I painted it. And then when I sanded it, it gives it that real kind of rusty. Let's see if I can get up a bit closer so you can see. Can you see how it's kind of chunked up? It made a really great background for the signs. Let's move this up a bit. Uh, I've always wanted to do this technique. Well, Misty, you need to try it out. From San Diego and Sunshine. Love your graphics. From Sweden. Marie. And Marie, thanks. I always see your comments on my videos and I appreciate your support. Everybody that leaves comments on, on my videos, I, I love reading them. I try, actually I get through every one as best as I can. If you have any questions, I always try to answer them. I might not get to them right away, but I will get there. I'm getting more and more every day, but one of my focuses of this channel is to stay personal and make sure I can help you guys out. So I try to get to all of your questions the best that I can. And you can also also um, leave me questions over on Instagram or Facebook and I'll always see them over there too. Okay, this feels pretty good. I think I've got this one kind of rubbed off. Now I'm just gonna show you what I mean about never perfect because this one on the bottom it kind of rubbed off a little bit but I like the look of that I like the look of it kind of rustic see if I can bring it up closer see how this rubbed off right here 